Oh, brows are back on, so you know what that means. <laughs> DIY. I tried to do it. Kind of, sort of. It was really good, but then uh, there's a couple of mistakes, but I'm still gonna share it with you. <laughs> Welcome to my bathroom, and it's Echo. I should start singing. I probably could sound like Beyonce. I make videos on lifestyle improvement, life hacks, some DIYs, and just overall how to have balance in the chaos of life. And sometimes, you just gotta do things yourself. So that's how we ended up in all these little DIYs. Um, I did my bathroom and that's why I'm sitting in here on the toilet, on camera. <laughs> why don't we talk about what, 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 is, what is this? What's happening here? All right, I did five things to make over my bathroom. Um, were they perfect? Did I do them exactly how I planned? Kind of. Did I make some mess ups that I don't even wanna share, but I'm gonna share anyways? <laughs> yes. So these are the five things I did to make over my bathroom and to make it so I like it. Okay, first thing I did was the floor. This floor did not look like this. It was the whatever floor when I first moved in. It was similar to if you see my kitchen DIY, it was the same exact flooring, but like even a little worse. It just had a lot of history to it, <laughs> a lot of personality that was not beautiful to the eye you know maybe it had some memories <laughs> but you know when you those are memories that i made in there so i redid the flooring and if i didn't do anything to the bathroom that was the one thing i wanted to do and i couldn't wait so i had i had to do it so instead of doing it like the one in the kitchen i did the diy this one is each individual tile the bathroom is a little smaller so i figured why not and i was obsessed with this pattern i love this pattern i love the whole like older buildings usually have this pattern and that's why I kind of like older buildings. Um, and I was gonna go black and white, but then my favorite color is gray. So that's how we did up here. So I chose gray and white. I got this off of the Home Depot website. I got four boxes of four and I ended up using three and returning one. Get some money back. So um, the first thing is if you ever look up YouTubes on um, laminate peel and stick flooring, they're always gonna tell you to start in the middle. But did I start in the middle? No. <laughs> Cause that's a waste. It's a waste. I mean, I get what they're saying, start in the middle and go about, but I have found that when you start in the middle, you waste more tile than you need to. And I'm all about doing things at a, at a good price. Why spend more when you can spend less? Why do more when you can do less? So for me, I started from the corner and then I worked my way st uh, directly across in the middle and around. Okay, this is the bathroom so far. I've done rows one, two, and three. Um, just from wiping it down and using my hands, um, every now and then I'll wipe it with a little Clorox if I see like a spot that comes up or anything like that. So, so far, three rows down, and all that's left is a half row and around the toilet. That way, there are full tiles in the middle and the only tiles that I had to cut in half were the ones along the edges. I found that I saved 10 more tiles and that's why I was able to return one because I started on the edges and only the ends were the ones that were like the half tiles. Because if you start in the middle, you literally have to cut every single tile on the edge around. And if you start in the corner, you literally only have to kind of cut the ones kind of more on, the, on one side, if that makes any sense. I think it does. You'll understand when you start doing it. Um, but I like the peel and stick because even if, you know, it's rental friendly, if when I move out, they tell me to take it off, which they won't because it's beautiful, it'll be easy, easy to take off just like the peel and stick wallpaper. Um, it did take a long time. <laughs> but I love the tile so much I didn't mind. You know, like when you're doing your makeup as a girl and you're like, this is taking forever, but I'm about to look so good. That's how I felt with this morning. I was like, it's gonna look so good. So, um, it did take me a long time. I would say it took like a full day, just like if you do wallpaper. Um, I did cut with scissors and I cut with, um, I don't know what kind of knife that's called, but like a, a tool knife. Um, but I felt that I did a lot of like cutting and cutting and then always cutting just a little bit because once you cut too much, you waste a tile and ain't nobody trying to waste a tile so I did that the hardest part of the flooring was around the toilet but what I did was the part that you peel off I used the paper and I would trace it around and I would measure what that size was and once I got the size of that then I cut the tile to match the same size as the paper so that worst case scenario I messed up on the paper and not the actual tile 
I didn't learn that from nobody. I thought of that myself. So you could take that for your own when you do yours. <laughs> okay, so I did want to kind of just show you um, around the toilet. So I just placed it down as like, ooh, a little sticky part. So now I'm just pushing it down as much as I can. And then I'm going to just use this knife and carve around it and cut it out. And um, yeah, I feel like there were parts, the closest around the bathtub I feel like are the only parts that like tried to raise a little bit only because I forced it in there compared to just cutting it shorter and I didn't want to. I wanted to force it in there. So I felt like only time I ever felt like anything would ever raise up is if you need to cut it maybe like a half of a half of a millimeter shorter because you're pers you're you're pressing it you're pressing it so hard that it's going like this. But if you just cut a little bit, then it'll fit perfectly. Does that make sense? I think it does. So anyways, that was the flooring. That's the first thing I did. The second thing I did for my bathroom makeover was the countertop. The countertop I almost didn't do because I didn't think it was that bad. It was still kind of marble, but it was like that old fashioned marble. Um, but the reason why I decided to do it was because it was like an off white, just like those kitchen cabinets. And I felt like a lighter color would brighten up the bathroom and that's what I really wanted. So I used the same exact contact paper as the, some, the one in the kitchen. I tried to just use the leftovers and I was like, geez, let it just work but it only did half a counter. So I had to order some more. I think it was like a seven by 28, um, whatever was the size down from what I um, wanted. If you have any questions on the exact size, just let me know in the comments below. But um, yeah, so I did that. This was a lot harder than the kitchen countertop because the sink is a lot more rounder than the kitchen and the edges need to be a lot more smoother too. So I had a lot of trouble in this and I almost didn't want to do this video because I was like, no, the countertop is horrible. It doesn't look good. But you know what? I wouldn't be real if I wanted to show you how it does not turn out perfect every time. So the inside of the sink area, like where, I, I don't know if you can see it, I'll probably try to do a close up. The inside of the sink where it's kind of up, it's that part where I try to blow dry it and fold it over. Um, but the part on the closest to where you're standing is just, it just didn't turn out how I want it. It just didn't turn out how I want it. And I know I could easily fix it by getting another piece of contact paper and just having it fold over completely. <sighs> but I'm not doing that right now. I'm not doing that right now. I'll do it eventually. Maybe I'll do it when I have guests and quarantine's over, I don't know. But right now, I'm just leaving it the way it is and I'm fine with that. Um, so if you come across that problem, it's an easy fix. Just take another piece of paper long ways and make it go all the way over. I even didn't even cut off the like exact edges. I didn't mind have a little bit hanging out just because there's little imperfections that I was okay with and that was one of them. I was like, it's fine. I like the way it looks. It's pretty. And it's a very easy way to wipe down. I wipe it down just like you would if you use Calm, if you use um, Clorox spray, whatever. It wipes down perfectly fine. Um, a note to self though, after a while, either be in the kitchen, bathroom, whatever countertop you do, you need to make sure you dry it. If you leave a puddle of water on there, just over time, it will raise. I think I had like a, a, a wall scent thing that fell and all the liquid just fell over there for over like a day and then it like puffed up. The contact paper kind of puffed up and it's like, that's not good. So, note to self, if a puddle's on there for longer than a day, it's gonna raise up and it's not gonna be nice. It's no different from if you have fancy wood, that's why you got coasters, right? It might be cheap, but you still gotta be nice to it. Okay, so the third thing I did was I painted the cabinets and the trimming. Now that's not exactly even so friendly, but I just brushed it up, just a little touch up, you know, just like I did in the kitchen. So the reason why I wanted to do the trimming on the floor is because where the floor meets the wall, it was just like, why am I going to have a beautiful floor? And then right when the wall starts, it just gets ugly. It, it, there was no point. So that's why I just, that little trim, I don't, there's a word for that, that I don't know what it is, that trim right where the wall meets the floor, I just painted that little line and freshened it up a bit. And then I just did this part of the cabinet, this cabinet, and then this fake cabinet that everybody has in the bathroom that's not really a drawer. I did that. Um, and then I left everything else alone because I didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> um, but yeah, same easy way to paint, same paint I used in the kitchen. I still have some leftover. So if it gets bad, I'll just brush it up. 
The fourth thing I did on my bathroom makeover is my soap dispenser. So I love it because I don't know about you, but I love me a mason jar. So I love the fact that just like in the kitchen, it was a regular mason jar that I had. It came in a two pack. So one top I used for the kitchen, the other top I used for the bathroom. All it was is like that circle, the spout and a straw. You cut the straw so that it's large enough to fit in whatever size um, mason jar you have. You put it through the hole, put the top on top, put some soap in it. Everybody you got a soap dispenser that you kind of made yourself. Um, that's another very easy DIY, just like the wall outlet, the copper looking one I put replaced over there. Um, if you're ever starting off simple and you're starting off like, uh, I don't know, start with very simple things like that. Things that like literally you just put together very simple or just unscrew and screw on very simple. Um, yeah, those are easy, easy ones. And the fifth thing I did <laughs> to make over my bathroom was just add, um, some towels like usually I just have whatever towel I'm showering with but um I didn't finish buying the second pair because I wanted to whenever you're buying a towel I always suggest buy a small one first and see if you like the way it looks and then buy the big set so right now I already have like white towels but I just bought this this one so I want to see what the pattern was like because it kind of goes with um, my shower curtain and I just didn't want it to be like there's a lot of patterns happening up in here and you, you know I don't like all that like the simplicity of it um, so I didn't buy this set yet but right now I just bought this top one a little hack that I feel like I've noticed is you can just have plain bottom towels and get like a designer for the top towel sometimes it's too much if it's a design on the top and the bottom it's just a lot going on so you could always mix and match or have the design on the bottom and then the plain white towel on top or whatever color you go for. Um, the one thing that I almost didn't want to do this video because I didn't know if I was finished if I wanted to replace my, um, you can't see right here, my shower curtain. It's, nothing's wrong with it, but I was thinking since everything was white, should I just go white? But then I was like, is that boring? I'm not boring. So I don't know. The things that I still might change is um, the railings on like where the towel racks go and then I might do a white shower curtain, but for now, it works. So that's all I did. I spent about, let's say, let's say I did about 60 for the floor, 60. I would say I spent like under $200 for the bathroom. Um, yeah, easy peasy. Probably even more like 150, not even. So those are just very simple things. Um, I did to make it more bathroom and I actually like it a lot. I love it. Like I used to have carpet like little rugs in here and now I'm like who needs a carpet when you like your floor? And the floor is very easy to clean too. I just use a little Clorox wipe. Like I literally am straight Cinderella and just wiping my floor with the Clorox, the Clorox wipe just because it's, it's very simple and I can do it like every few days. Um, and yeah. I don't mind to be on the floor because the floor is so pretty. I love it. Um, that's all I did. So if you have any questions on making over your bathroom or just starting off, what's the very first thing you want to do making your DIY? Let me know in the comments below if you want any, you know, more detail on how I did the floor, anything at all. Um, cause you might have some extra time on your hands these days. Um, hit the bell because I will be giving you more tips on just like little DIYs, big DIYs. I don't know what I'll do next. We'll see. Um, but I'm excited to continue on this like journey of DIYs, life improvement, life hacks. Let's do it. Until the next life hack or DIY, peace, love, and balance. Look at that floor, look at that floor, I did that floor. I did that floor.